Good afternoon. I'd like to thank everyone for coming today. Today is a special day because we're remembering a really special person. There must be a Facebook in heaven because today I got a birthday reminder on Facebook. Before we get started, I'd like everyone to stand and join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. This time, please take your seats. We will begin our remembering ceremonies with Jim. Then retiring of the colors and then a potluck refreshments and the uh, 
cafeteria here at the location of the post. Thank you very much. The location of the Please uh, stand and remove your hat, please. Gracious God and Father, we thank you for your presence and love which helps us to endure through difficult times. We thank you for moments like these when we don't have to be alone but can gather among brothers and sisters in the faith. We thank you for the peace that you have brought us today, your peace that can exist within us even when all around us there is no peace. As much as you comfort us who have gathered here today, we pray that in even greater measure you will comfort Jim's family, especially his wife Mary. Be for them all that they need you to be just now and continue to provide for them in every way in the days, weeks, months, and years ahead that they face life without their husband, father, and son. Finally, Lord, we pray that you will bring real peace to our land so that we can rest in safety and comfort and not have to send our sons and daughters into harm's way. Bring to us, we humbly ask you, the time when parents don't have to grieve the loss of their children. Hasten the day when spouses don't have to say goodbye to their loved ones because they serve their country. Provide for us, dear Father, a world whose children do not have to grow up fatherless because of the sin that envel envelops us and be victorious. Almighty God, over the evil one, establish your kingdom on earth, finally and forever, that we may enjoy your loving and peaceful presence for all eternity. <clears throat> Go with us now, Lord, we pray, as we reluctantly return to the world out there. Please don't let us soon forget our brother Jim, but help us to honor his sacrifice through our lives lived for your glory and Christ's life lived through us. May the God of peace who thought who through the blood of the internal covenant brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus the great shepherd of the sheep equip you with everything for doing his will and may he work in us what is pleasing to him through Jesus Christ to whom be glory forever and ever Amen, Amen. <laughs> Take your seats everyone <laughs> <coughs> My name is Nick Kenler. I served with Jim on Patriot Guard Riders from the day he started until the day he passed. Uh, Jim introduced himself to me. Hi, I'm Jim Krachowski. I have a hard time remembering names. And I knew that, that wasn't going to happen. So after a little bit, I started calling him Jimski. Make it easy for myself to remember. And then some other people picked up on it, so he kind of was a jimski from then on. Um, I want to talk about a hero. Lynn, where were you sitting? Uh, well, in the back. Read off all the awards that Jim got for his service in the military. And there's plenty of which all were deservedly earned. The one that Jim honored and cherished the most was the combat medics badge, the CMB. On his vest, he had two mentions of his service. One 
was the patch from the first cab, and the other one was his CMB. How does a medic get a CMB? The medic is in combat. You have to be in combat, and you have to be under fire to get a combat medic's badge. Now, in country, a medic is assigned to a platoon. They take care of the troops, giving you the malaria pills every day. You know, they choke down, checking for blisters, making sure you're hydrated. Our medic, I'm going to be a little crude here, our medics uh, used to say, are you peeing? If you're not peeing, you're not drinking enough water. So that's kind of weak. All medics did. When the fan got messy, when the bullets started flying, the shrapnel started flying, we were duck for cover. I mean, just get down and uh, don't give your position away, return the fire. People would get wounded. That's where the medic came into play. They're running around, oblivious to bullets and shrapnel flying around them, treating wounded soldiers, bringing them back, getting them out of, the, out of harm's way, regardless of the severity of the wound. They're the first line of medicine. Like I said, oblivious to all the stuff going on around them. A lot of guys today have purple hearts that owe their lives to the combat medic. Jim was that. Jim was a hero. I think all medics are, all combat medics are heroes. Jim was in that pantheon. Um, in the flag line, the Patriot Guard. Didn't lose that. We'd have cold days up on a mission. He'd have his car there. Come, get in the car, get warm, I have heated seats. Hot days, he'd gotten done drinking enough water. That's the way he was, took care of all of us. I missed Jim, I loved him, and you always have an honored place in my heart. Thank you. Good night, David. <coughs> So, I got this little talk written up, and it says at the top, Captain Crunch. My daughter looked at it this morning and goes, I love that stuff. <laughs> okay. So, I love it too. So, if there's any tissues here, I'm going to need them, Dave's going to need them. Oh, thank you, sir. I always thought that Captain Crunch was a fun deviation of Jim's name. And, Mary, maybe you can tell us. Is this thing on? You can hear me? And Mary, maybe you can tell tell us where the name really came from. Uh, I, I actually thought that it was because uh, you wiped out a few times. But maybe it's just because of the last name. Um, football and the last name. Football and the last name. service back in 2014. I was in charge of the logistics for the building for the church that was held in a service. And I got there about 5.30 that morning to start directing the news crews and the fire and EMS guys. They had to put up their flags. And uh, who do you think was the first guy I saw in the lobby of the church? Jim. I didn't know Jim at the time. I wasn't Major Garden member at the time. And 
And I went up to introduce myself. And I didn't know what to say. I never met one of these Patriot Guard writers. I always thought they were the coolest guys in the world. And I don't even remember what Jim said, but he probably said something very humble, like, it's our own here. <clears throat> that was almost 10 years ago. It's 2014. The one thing I learned about Jim over those years, he's a man of honor and dedication. Yeah, we touched on that a little bit in this talk. Like Gabby said, there's been countless, countless missions that Jim has been on or the right captain of. And I bet if we look back in the history of who was right captain, there's probably 15, 20, 25 missions that Jim was the right captain in success. What's the word I'm looking for? Successive. In order, he probably, I don't know how many he did. He was, he was all, it seemed like Jim was always the right captain. And when Jim was the right captain and I got there, uh, I knew that this was going to be a special event. Dedication, honor, duty, service. Those are four big words that describe the man like Jim. Captain the big enough to describe the man like Jim. He was above that. There were several missions where Jim was right captain. When he had trouble standing, he walked with a cane, but that never slowed him down. It never changed his honor or his dedication to making sure that those who came before him were honored in their time. this day, we're going to need some tissues. As many of you know, I never served in the armed forces. Never served fire, EMS, anything. Therefore, I can't salute Jim. Imagine Jim up there in heaven, organizing a whole bunch of guys and gals to welcome those who served with him, before him, and those who are arriving in heaven today. It's an honor. Called Jim Abram. And Mary, I thank you for the opportunity to be here today. You're up, Kim. <laughs> I showed up at PDX, I didn't know how to shift that Harley Davidson ride. 
I was mortified that I was going to screw it up and mess it up, and I was going to do something embarrassing. And then I met this guy named Jim. And Jim walked up to me and introduced himself. And he says, you're one of us. You're one of us. Don't worry about messing up, because we're here as a brotherhood. We're here to be a group together. We're here for you. When I was riding home that night, about 11.30 at night, by myself, I kept thinking, I've become a part of a group of men and women who give a damn. And that's one of the things that Jim taught me from the day that I started being a ride captain in Oregon. He used to come up to me and go, ah, you don't have enough experience for this one, David. I'll take this one. And he said that to me several times. <clears throat> and I learned over the years that his mentoring helped me become who I am as a ride captain and as a BGR member. When I look around this room today, every one of us were impacted by Jim's influence, his support, his love, his understanding. It truly is a brotherhood. It's a brotherhood that Jim is so much continuing to be a part of. He influenced every one of us here today. He supported us. He would tell us, when well, you're not doing this right, David. You need to, you need to pay attention to something. But Jim's mentoring and his love and understanding is what brought all of us here today. And Mary, it is truly. It's humbling to be able to stand and sit next to you and honor the man that influenced all of us here. And for that, eternally grateful.
There's a switch right up there by the right. I see two switches off. Come mm -hmm. up. The microphone. Can we all please rise?
disabled kids and as a result of my background is architecture as a result of that I've designed several inclusive homes for people in wheelchairs and stuff. influenced by my mom yes I got one more really sweet lady with a big heart 
Can I get some water? Sure. No water? No. You know what? Take the lid off there. Oh, okay. Okay. You can take the lid off Can you give me a small plate right there? I don't want it too far away from everybody else. I just needed one. That's a big Yeah, the first field trip I went on, they gave me this autistic kid to keep an eye on. And we were at a petting zoo. He decided to throw rocks at the animals. I was like 18. So I, I knew what I would do if he was my brother. He's talking about shouting on here. Somebody lay there walking past you. These are all popping. Ribs are lasagna. Well, I don't know, Rodney. Take a little bit of everything. That's the lasagna. Yeah, right there. Yeah. And then the ribs, and then I get more ribs. 